Okay, so in our, our second part of lesson three, we're doing the same thing um, that we've been doing, which is looking at the factors of a number. Uh, this time I want to ask a, a maybe a little bit um, more daunting problem, which is what is the product of all those factors? Well, if you look at 28, um, and, and we consider 28, um, the factors of 28 are 1 times 28, 2 times 14, um, and then 4 times 7. So there are actually six factors of 28. And so if you were to multiply um, all of those numbers together, you would get 21,952. So if you multiplied all those numbers together, you'd get 21,952. And so... That's one way to do a problem like this, just to list the factors out and take a calculator and multiply. The problem is what that is pretty limited because what if we ran into something, you know, some of these problems we've looked at have 50 factors or 60 factors or 70 factors. And, and how do you handle, handle doing that with that many factors? Well, the way you do it is you think a little bit about what this is, right? These over here are three different pairs of factors. And that's going to be... 1 times 28, and you're going to multiply that 2 times 14, and then 4 times 7. And so essentially by using what we call the associative property of um, uh, multiplication, we can group these together such that all of these multiply together to be the exact same thing, which would be 28. And so it actually turns out to be 28 to the third power. So the real procedure for doing this is find out how many factors there are of 28, if you find the number of factors of 28, that means that there are half that many pairs of factors that multiply up to that number. So it's always going to be your original number raised to half the number of factors. Well, I said always, and I did, that, that's actually not true. It's most of the time that, because occasionally you run into a situation like this one, where if you look at, you know, I said find, when you're doing the product of factors, you always first find the number of factors. So I do my prime factorization of 36, which is going to give me 2 squared times 3 squared. And that's going to, when you add 1 to each of these, that's going to give you 9 factors. So 36 has 9 factors. And so I can't do 36 to the um, 4 halves. Actually, it does turn out to be true that it is 36 to the 4.5 factor. But we really don't know how to deal with decimals um, in powers. So let's just think about it a little bit more. And a better one way to think about it would be to think about it um, in a case like this. If we listed these out, we'd have 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9. That, those are the all the pairs of factors. The last pair of factors is 6 times 6, but we only count 6 once. So when we're multiplying the, the product of the factors together, of 36, we only include the 6 one time. So we don't have that fifth 36 that we're multiplying together. We actually have the square root of 36, which is 6. So if you ever run, up, run into a situation like this, where you've got an odd number of factors, then it's always going to be divided by 2, which in this case is 4.5. So take the integer, which is 4, and then multiply that times 6 to the first. So your answer would be 36 to the 4th times 6 to the 1st. And as these get big, it's going to be okay to leave your answer in what we call exponential form. Another way to do this is to recognize that 36 to the 4th is the same as 6 to the 8th. Right? It's 36 times itself 4 times. Well, each of the 36 is 6 times 6, so that would be 8 sixes. And 6 to the 8th times 6 to the 1st is 6 to the 9th. So maybe even a better answer on these odds would be 6 the square root. If you ever end up with an odd number of factors, take the square root of this and just raise it to the number of factors you have there. So square root of 36 is 6. 6 to the ninth is the total number of factors. Um, the last example we'll look at, one of the little, a bigger, little bit bigger numbers, which would be 200. If you take the prime factorization of 200, if you notice, all of these are starting out with doing prime factorization. So hopefully you're getting good at doing prime factorization. And so our prime factorization on this one is 2 to the 3rd times 5 squared. The total number of factors, add 1 to both of them, and so that's going to be 4 times 3, which equals 12 factors. 
So that means there's 12 factors, which means there are six pairs of factors. So the product of the factors of 200 is just 200 to the sixth power. So it really turns out to be a pretty easy problem once you get a hang of it. All you have to do is find the number of factors, cut it in half, and raise it to um, that number to that that the half of the number of factors. Except when the um, number we're looking at is a perfect square, and that's when we have to deal with the odd number of factors, and like we did on example two. 